So tell me who you are, who you're with, and what kind of machine we have here. Hello, I'm Chip Nelson with Jeffco. I'm the director of sales, and we're at the Myrtle Beach Jubilee Convention 2025. We're standing in front of a new Jeffco 30K. It's mounted on a Western Star, 565 horses. The Jeffco rig is an air mud combination rig, 1,350 compressor, four by three mud on this unit, set up to run four and a half drill pipe, capable of 420 feet of drill pipe on the rig going down the road. Sure. We walk to the back of the rig, I'll show you a few of the features. All right. On the back of the rig, you will see top head drive, with a 120 foot six rod carousel inside the mast. Nice. That hydraulically comes to the top head instead of the top head going to the carousel. Okay. We also run a single rod loader. So once we're done running the 120 foot in the carousel, we can always have a rod in the vertical position ready to make a connection. Gotcha. Making the helper's life easier. Helper's controls for handling the drill pipe, casing, and loading the single rod loader. That's really nice. 60 inch wrench for breakout, air operated holding fork for making connections. We also have a hydraulic rod spinner on there for when we're tripping out of the hole. Instead of the helper having to unspin the rods by hand, we're doing it hydraulically. Nice. All the operating controls are grouped in this station. Everything from leveling jacks and raising the mass to engaging the compressor, engaging the truck clutch winches, top head, everything. Also, we have a full deck of gauges there to uh, keep the driller knowing what's going on hydraulically and through the truck engine. We also have a new system with telematics where we can actually talk to the rig from the factory. We can service the rig online, don't have to be on location to help the customer keep the rig availability as high as possible. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Correct. Awesome. Correct. Awesome. The rig's got 25 gallon a minute water injection for dust control. Nice. Seven gallon electric downhole hammer lubricator. Air operated valve system for downhole air and, and mud. All your air controls are bank, banked right here. So they're easily visible from the control and operator station. One thing we have added now to all of our products is remote greasing ports. Keep people off the deck. Oh, that's slick. So this handles the fan drive for the compressor. On the helper side of the rig, we have a pack to grease everything in the crown. And we have a, a deck of grease search to grease everything in the mass racing cylinders and the mass pins. So no, no forgetting those hard to reach grease areas. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Nice. I like that. The 4x3 centrifugal is mounted here standardly. We can also mount it on the rear of the rig by the jacks. What does that do? That's a mud pump. Okay, for mud yep. pump. I've never done any mud, so I just don't know about it. Well, you need to come to the Jeffco Drill School, and we'll teach you all about mud I, drilling. That, I talked to the gentleman yesterday. That, I believe, is going to be the plan. Great. That's going to be the plan. Hydraulic reservoir with here. All the filters are internal in the tank. These are high-pressure return filters mud pump as you can see and every time uh if there's ever an issue in the circuit it gets trapped here before it pollutes the entire system nice. Nice. Yes. yeah we actually had our whole rig outfitted with new hydraulics last year and they had put a couple of uh hoses on and forgot to take the blue plugs out yep and then all the blue plugs went to the filter. the filter i was like thank god yes that would exactly. have been such a disaster that would have been such a disaster now this truck is different as it doesn't have a deck motor up top. Correct. So this is a PTO drive off the, the front end. It's the Jeffco product line from the heritage of the Speedstar product line. So we are PTO operated rigs only. We okay. do no longer build a deck engine machine. We have been building PTO machines since the 1930s. Okay. And uh, this PTO is built in house by us. It is our PTO. Okay. It's a real solid mousetrap now so i guess the rig itself can be mounted on different chassis of correct the truck. currently we're using western star okay. kenworth and peterbilt chassis okay and those motors the engines in the truck really don't it, 
It, they all run it just fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 565 horsepower, 1800 RPM. So different brands of trucks may offer different engine packages. Is there a benefit from one to the other? There are. Okay. But currently we use Cummins only across okay. the board. Okay. Yeah. So all these trucks are powered by Cummins. Cummins. Okay. Yes. Smart. Smart. Reliable engines. Yep. Reliable engines. It's a beautiful looking machine. It's a beautiful looking machine. I notice it's got two winches. Got main winch for tripping the hole, which is 25,000 pounds single line. Okay. And then we've got an auxiliary winch on there for just tool handling. Uh, it's a BG8. Okay. So you can trip the well with the winch. With the winch. And not have to use the top head. Top head. Correct. Wow. Yeah. All I've ever tripped is with the top head. Yeah. Very neat. It's, very very beefy looking Derek. I mean that thing is now what is the overall like gross weight of this truck? Fifty six thousand with no tools. So fully outfitted, what is that like sixty five? Sixty three, sixty four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is in, in, you know, in my brain, is this equivalent to something like a T four? TH be closer to T H sixty. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's just as far as weight. Yeah, T H sixty, T three. Okay, yeah, because Six, this doesn't have the, the front drop axle. So no. if it was a heavier truck, it would have that yeah. front drop axle. To In down. some areas, customers are having us build them on tri drives for them now. And we also do it with an airlift axle. So those are options. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like these because I like the, the two front jack lifts stabilizers yeah. yeah instead of just the single in the front because mm -hmm. all i've ever had is you know yeah. uh, basically a tripod you know one in the front two in the back yeah. i've just always felt more comfortable and stable if it would have four yeah 48 inch jacks in the front 36 inch jacks in the rear okay now you mean 48 inch versus 36 like the length that it goes up and down correct okay, okay. correct something new we've added to lubrication chart on the control station uh, panel cover. Now, what is this for? This is telling the the contractor what lubricant is in each one of the components. I got you. This is about like oil changes. On yes, your volumes and what brand of oil. Compressor, it's got in engine, it. filters, all that. Oh, nice, very nice. Yep, that's uh, always something very important to keep your equipment up and running. Mm -hmm. A lot of people neglect stuff. I'm just not one of those people. Correct. I like keeping it running for a very, very, very long time. If you do your due diligence on a piece of equipment like this, theoretically, it could last your lifetime. Correct. You know. Correct. It's definitely an investment that you would want to take care of. Absolutely a beautiful, beautiful machine. I love the walkways. You got a really, really nice platform here. Now, is this set up for a diverter? We can put a diverter on it. Okay. This is just our standard dust tub. Okay. With we'll put a rod wiper yep. inside there, yep. and uh, then we also have the skirt, which is down there that here to contain all cuttings and keep them Very uh, nice. from blowing out. Very nice. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's very slick. Yeah, I like the open layout. I was talking to him yesterday about how just standing up on top up there. You have really good access to everything. You yep. know, really easy to work on. Really easy to work on. It's always different when you can see it put in action, though. I'd be excited to come down there and, and watch this this machine run. Whenever you want to come, door is always open. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'll tell you a real quick story. Yeah. I'll tell you my heritage. Yeah. That dust tub, that's just a Goodyear feed bucket, like you'd feed horses with and yeah. stuff. Okay. Upside down. My granddad and my dad were cutting wheat in Lamar, Colorado on the family farm. And that's when they first were bringing air to drilling. Mm -hmm. And with the rotary tables, the cuttings were coming up, sandblasting the bottom of the table so bad they couldn't keep seals in them. Mm -hmm. My dad walks around a corner in a co-op in Lamar, Colorado. My granddad's got two of those dust tubs down. He's got his little tape measure. He's measuring it. My dad's like, what do you got? He goes, I got an idea. He yeah. took two of these back to the farm. And when they got done cutting wheat, my granddad in the barn had built this system. So we've been using basically this same design since the 1950s. That's cool. If it's work, you know, if it works, don't, yeah. don't change it. Yeah. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah, that's a lot of things I see on other drillers online. Everybody gets dirty. 
and it, it's a dirty job, but if you can keep the the dirt and the mud and everything under control, I think you have a safer working environment. Correct. You know, keep it, and, keep it, keep those guys safe. Don't work them as hard. Make the back of the rig operator friendly, helper right. friendly, that's safer, right. and uh, they'll stay along and be a long time employee for you. That's right. Yeah, that was always my biggest thing. I bring somebody new on. I said my job is to make sure you stay safe. Yeah. And you know, you got to teach them, but. It, the end of the day it's everybody needs to go home with all fingers and toes correct correct and we've been doing this like 38 years and we've never had a severe accident yeah we just we try to work growing up my dad smooth. always said you have to have a rig that a guy can run all week and go home on friday night clean up and take his wife out dancing. that's right that's right yeah. i'm not built like a lot of people so i get tired um but I'm still here, still trying to do it, you know. You bet. But um, we're we're kind of in that transitional phase of the business where Dad's starting to retire, and then I'm starting to take his place. But he still doesn't want to let let it go yet. But we're, I think it's it's a transition for anybody. Yeah. Stepping out of something you've done for 40 years of your life. We have to bring the youth into this industry. It's That's good, right. It's a good industry. That's it's right. a solid industry and it's a needed industry. I think so. there's a 20 year span of people who like, like, uh, what's that? Willie Roberts? Yes. Like Willie was saying, you know, you got to get people in. They don't want to work. I think that's true for a small group of people. It's just, we see it online and everything. And I think that small group of people is being broadcasted more than the people who actually do want to work. Correct. Because the people who do want to work, they don't grab the attention. It's the people who don't want to work that grab the attention. Correct. But you've got to try to find the people who do want to work. And then when you do, train them, teach them, and appreciate them. Yep. And then I just, you pay people their worth. Correct. Pay people their worth, and they'll stay with you. Yeah. You know. Very slick. Yeah, I like that that little carousel right there that just holds the rod like it's just sitting there ready. Yeah. That's slick. And I like the fact that the the helper mm -hmm. can pick up rods. So is yeah. okay, so that is the winch control. That's winch and jib control. And jib yeah, that's yeah. cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, if he's got to get something off the, you know, if the helper's got to go to the water truck or the pipe trailer, yeah. the driller can move over here, run those controls. They can good visibility between the two of them a safe way to handle it absolutely yeah y'all y'all think about a lot it's not just building it you're building in features that aren't necessarily shown you're building in features that help you when you're on the site we also now to get rid of this 60 we have an automated breakout system hands-free with the pipe spinner built in helper doesn't touch anything except putting pipe down the rod box wow so that's what this is. That's just the rod spinner. Okay. The breakout's not on this machine. It's an option. Okay. But it hydraulically breaks the rod, spins the rod, and uh, the helper does nothing. The driller handles it all. That's wild. Yeah, the first thing I ever learned back when I was 15 was how to trip out. Yeah. And I got really, really good at it. You know, <laughs> I just, it, it's, it's a rhythm and you got to stay in that rhythm. Correct. But that's what I teach the guys. I'm like, you know, well drilling is like a ballet. You have to learn to where everybody stays in sync mm -hmm. with one another because if everybody can stay in sync, everybody stays safe. Correct. It's when you get out of your rhythm, people can get hurt. Yep. Very cool. Love it. Yeah, I, I would the, absolutely love to come there. We have the pro professors from Fleming College from Canada Okay. come and teach it. Uh, We've been doing it now for 28 years. Okay. So you would like it. So the drilling school is down in Texas? Yes. Okay. Now, for the average person who's watching this who knows nothing about the drilling school, what does something like that cost? The drill school is is $3,000. Okay. To attend. How long is it? It's five full days. Five full days. Yeah. Half a day, quarter of a day in the classroom. The rest of the day, you're out back on the drill rig. We're actually drilling. Air drilling, mud drilling, auger drilling. Uh Drilling with hammers, drilling with tricones, drilling with PDCs. Nice. Foam drilling, stiff foam drilling. We're, we're doing multiple different grouting methods to grout the holes. Okay. It's a full comprehensive class. Okay. We talk about geology. We talk about rig safety. We talk about everything, basically, that a new person needs to learn to begin 
to get on the back of one of these awesome. rigs. Awesome. And we like get that. new guys and we get 40 year guys. Yeah. And they all tell me, Chip, I, I learned a ton in this class. I've always said there needed to be something like that. Yeah. I just didn't know it existed. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, Chip. Yep, thank you. Thank you for everything you do, and I look forward to uh, hopefully coming to that school. Wonderful. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. You, did you get one of my cards? All right, so the rig behind me, which is the Jeffco, just talked to those guys for about 15 minutes, and they were, like, trying to invite me to come down to Texas to their driller school and do some content down there. So he said they're still waiting to schedule what they're going to do for driller school. Um like next year or something. So I might be able to go down to Texas and uh, hop on the back of one of those machines or just watch other people do it, just you know, content in general. But I had a really good conversation with them. Really good guys at Jeffco, so. I think I'm gonna get on out of here. It's late, I'm hungry. <laughs>